What's going on peeps? There has been several videos going around about the downfall of creators and not enough about the rise of creators we know and love. Case in point, Brad Taste in Music, a popular music reviewer reactor who has made a name for himself through his goofy sense of humor and love for the musical craft. This channel of his has gained him 240,000 subscribers, which is rare for a music reviewer in today's landscape. Now, Brad is a friend of mine, someone I've been watching for years, and I've been able to witness his rise to fame. As a birthday gift, I want to dedicate this video to Brad, discussing how he found success and how much he should appreciate how far he's come. Dropping that hooker to hooker to up in the streets. Bradley Lehman, born on April 7th, 2000, had developed a love for music at an early age. His father, Dad Taste of Music, is a musician himself, playing his guitar for Brad during his childhood. New Sonic Plague was the name, described by Brad as crazy electronic experimental shit. He grew up with artists such as Eminem and Kanye West with the Superstar collaboration single Forever, leading to him exploring more hip-hop music like early Drake and Lil Wayne. He would spend his time on the bus continuously exposing himself to this music musical world before school, but all of this was just the same artist that everybody was listening to at the time. Predictable, boring ass, boardroom written collaboration you could possibly get. Brad decided to open up another door into the music world, the kind of stuff that the general public isn't constantly exposed to. The person that would introduce this type of music to Brad was none other than Anthony Fantano, The Needle Drop. Brad would develop a love for his reviews and the way he speaks about music. Through his reviews, he would discover artists that would become some of his all-time favorites like Def Grips, Swans, and Danny Brown, pretty much copying his opinions sometimes. He became his go-to when it comes to discovering new, boundary-pushing music. All of Fantano's tens would end up being music that Brad loved himself. It is safe to say that Fantano is an inspiration for Brad to start his own YouTube channel to give his own takes on music. The Brad Taste in Music, <clears throat> excuse me, Ninja Foo Vine YouTube channel was created on March 6th, 2017. His first video was uploaded the first day, titled Eminem and M, a classic YouTube poop style video that showcased what the Brad Taste channel would eventually be, memes combined with music. He would begin uploading his own music to his SoundCloud under the name DJ Busyness. Now, I would love to dive into his musical alias Big Baller B, but that deserves a video of its own, so let's continue to talk about Brad. On September 16th, 2017, Brad announced that he would now be a music reviewer. He would establish his goals as a music reviewer, despite how tough the growth can be. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun together. He would kick off his reviewing journey with Forced to Witness by Alex Cameron. This review saw an early Brad just talking about the music, not reacting to it, just giving his afterthoughts similar to Fantano. He would rate the album a 7.4 out of 10. Yes, he was rating albums by decibels, which would make sense once you realize the site he uses to keep a collection of ratings album of the year, a music reviewing site where you can rate albums and singles 1 through 100. As his popularity increased on YouTube, he would become the most popular user on this site, while at the same time exposing thousands to this site itself. Before this sudden rush of influence, Brad continued to review very various records throughout 2017, he would become associated with what I would call the Billboard community. This is a group of content creators who review popular music that appears on the Billboard Hot 100, aka what the general public is listening to. He started building connections with Spectrum Pulse and ARTV. However, Brad quickly realized this view format wasn't going to work in the long term. The field had already been occupied by more famous reviewers like Fantano. Why would you go to a Brad review when you could just watch Fantano's instead? That is the mindset of music nerds, not mine. But something Fantano doesn't do usually is reactions. So in order to make himself stand out a bit more, Brad transformed into a reaction review channel, a switch in style that would change his life. This decision would receive a bit of hate from the Billboard community, calling him a sell out, but with the decline in viewership that Space has had, you can't really blame him. He started a Patreon in 2018 and ordered help support his videos through college. His small fan base recommended an underground band that you might not know, 21 Pilots. 
Brad reacted to their 2015 album Blurry Face, an album that he criticized but also gave some credit to. His very honest reaction and over the top editing style caused the video to become his biggest yet. It currently sits at 159,000 views. Pillow Pilot, a 21 Pilots meme fan page, featured Brad's reaction in a Try Not to Get Angry compilation. <laughs> While the man got some hate for the video, it also exposed him to more people than ever before. Brad had found an audience, the emo alternative rock scene. Most people who review these artists are positive, knowing how vicious the fanbase can be if they say anything negative. Instead, Brad kept his credibility to his chest and gave an honest reaction to multiple 21 Pilots, Panic at the Disco, and My Chemical Romance records. With the use of over-the-top decorative thumbnails, displaying ratings like 0 out of 10 and 10 out of 10, it baked the viewer enough to check out the video to see if the rating would be true. The formula was working, and soon he had reached a thousand subscribers. On April 8th, 2018, Brad would upload his most popular reaction of all time to emo cult classic The Black Parade by My Chemical Romance. This would be the video that caused Brad to absolutely explode in viewership. Not only did Brad Brad loved this album, giving it a 9, but the editing, the commentary, his facial expressions were perfect. It's a music reaction classic, garnering 800,000 views as of now. He couldn't let this momentum slip, so he reacted to more MCR, Panic, and T.O.P. He would also be recommended artists like Arctic Monkeys, Gorillaz, and Joji. These videos become so popular that he would start building even bigger connections with content creators. Brad would continue his Fantano standage by commenting on his videos and tweets a lot, which would end up getting enough likes to make it in his videos. He became friends with cartoons. YouTuber Nate is lame and collaborated with him a few times. On May 21st, 2018, he would surpass 10,000 subscribers, another milestone. Brad was growing fast, and with brand new music from 21 Pilots, Panic, and Joji on the way, the music stands just couldn't get enough of Brad's reactions. Whether he hated or loved the records, he had become the go to when it came to honest reactions to this emo scene with insane editing and humor. He would usually rate tracks based on three categories. If the song sucked, he would give it the red headphones. If the song is mid, it gets a colorless shrug. If the song is good, it gets a smiley ball. July came around and Toil and Pilots released the lead single to their fourth album, Trench, called Jumpsuit. Brad had been very critical of their past work, but when he heard this song, he was blown away. He praised it, calling it their best work to date. This redemption arc made the click very happy, and Brad would shortly surpass 20,000 subscribers. Fast forward to October, where the album Trench was released. The anticipation was real. The entire click was looking forward to seeing what Brad would think of their album, which was being called their best by even the biggest critics like Fantano. Brad dropped the reaction. The man gave it a 9. He was floored by it, calling it one of the biggest improvements from an artist he'd seen. It would become his fastest growing video at the time due to how highly anticipated it was. It's no surprise he reached 30,000 subscribers after. He was going to the year 2019 bigger than ever, but this fame turned into pressure. He now had expectations to make these videos of flashy edits and playful sound effects. However, it takes a long time to make these videos, and it was starting to take a toll on him. The uploads started to slow down a bit. He was still in school after all. He had to balance both YouTube and college now. He didn't really have a job, so the only thing that was going to pay his bills was YouTube money and live streaming. His Patreon was pretty much abandoned at this point, but he still had enough dedicated fans that pledged for him. As his audience grew, these live streams would feature Brad reviewing all types of music for a fee. There is a surprising amount of people that will pay hundreds of dollars just for Brad to react to an entire album. Brad would have a few big videos in 2019, like his reaction to Currents by Tame Impala, When We All Fall Asleep by Billie Eilish, Earth by Lil Dicky, which might as well have been a bed review reaction in Neo Theater by ADR. Unfortunately, these did not match the viewership he had in 2018. He still had a strong back catalog, but there was something wrong. 
Since his childhood, Brad has struggled with depression, anxiety, and ADHD. All of these illnesses can obviously take a lot of energy out of you and decrease your motivation. It was during 2019 where this struggle took a toll on Brad's health. Throughout the year, he was posting multiple videos about his mental health and being very open about it with his core audience. They are hard to watch, truly, which is why they are now unlisted. But it just goes to show how much of a connection Brad has with his audience. There are a lot of people who watch Brad that struggle with similar illnesses. They see Brad as a role model, someone who gives them hope to keep going. There's a reason he has such a dedicated fan base today. By far the biggest video of them all, I'm sorry, showcased Brad as absolute Lois, announcing he would be taking a break from content creation. Now what he didn't expect was for the video to be recommended to thousands of people who weren't familiar with him. Despite this, everyone seemed to show Brad the support and love he so dearly needed. He ultimately made the decision to drop out of college to pursue content creation, the best decision he could have made. If you're looking for positives in 2019, he would pass the halfway mark to 100k, as well as being introduced to his best friend, Lil Mosquito Disease, where the two created a meme rap album called Swarm. He would continue to help grow Mosquito's label Flex Entertainment. He also met the love of his life that year, who will refer to as Tina Um. Tina discovered Brad through his reaction to Neo Theater by AJR. Being a massive fan of AJR, she was disappointed by the review, but she must have seen something else and Bradley. The two started chatting with each other on Twitter. Eventually, the two met up and started dating towards the tail end of 2019. In 2021, they became engaged on April 3rd and adopted a dog, Suki. Despite not being able to see each other due to the pandemic, they still managed to stay together as a couple. Hopefully for a long time. As I mentioned before, 2020 was the COVID era, which gave content creators a massive increase in viewership due to everybody being stuck at home doing nothing. Brad would start becoming a whole lot more active during this period, torturing himself to Pink Guy, Travis Scott, and 21 Pilots, but also falling in love with The Strokes, Fiona Apple, The Weeknd, and even Joji? Yup, his reaction to Run became his fastest growing video in quite some time, similar to 21 Pilots Redemption arc, Joji's biggest critic and then he gets blown away by this single. If we want to talk about an artist that dominated Brad's channel, it was Arctic Monkeys, and for good reason because these reactions took off. Both parts of Whatever People Say I Am earned 300k, and the rest were pretty successful too. His channel is now seeing that 2018 growth, and he was on his way to 100k as 2021 faded in. One thing we started seeing less of was that flashy editing he was doing during that period. He has acknowledged this and decided to slow down the fast-paced editing for a more consistent style that involves less memes and more criticism. Your old videos were like a YouTube version of your, yeah, yeah, a YouTube poop version. I, I was like heavily inspired by that kind of shit. And now, now I'm more inspired by just, you know, content or whatever. And maybe a big letdown for old Brad fans, but you can't keep doing the same style forever because I know those videos exhausted them. In 2021, the channel was alive and growing as ever. With AJR and especially Toyo and Palace making their grand returns, the reactions were expected and delivered. Kanye, Billy, Tyler, all big reactions and all. But the true cream of the crop was topic videos. Brad has built himself a massive fan base at this point, full of musical nerds with decades of knowledge of the craft. So when Brad makes a community post asking his fan base to list out great songs and bad albums, they're gonna deliver. This experiment would overperform expectations and began a series of topic videos produced by the fans and Brad's reaction. It's the type of series that starts with a music nerd wondering, hmm, what are the worst songs of all time? What are songs that were ruined? They look this up and find Brad's own video. Along with timestamps and a lengthy watch time, these videos spread like wildfire, as well as the engagement of the community posts that even people who aren't subscribed to Brad can come across. It's just a circle of benefits for Brad, and of course, the people's submissions who will receive the honor of being in a Brad video. While not intentional, this experiment as well as the other reactions led to Brad finally reaching 100k subscribers on YouTube, May 21st. When Scale Nicely dropped, 
Okay, this man is never gonna escape the click. Keep in mind that this is still a music reviewer. Someone in this field that is reaching these heights is almost unheard of. He's up there with the likes of Fantano, Todd in the Shadows, Sean C, CDT Productions. While it isn't traditional music reviewing, he found a way to combine the art of reacting with it. 2022 just continued the momentum he had. More topic videos, more massive reactions for Tom McDonald, MGK, Demon Dice, Maury Colopi, The Island Boys, Brendan Yeary, <laughs> Gabby Hanna, Limp Biscuit, and of course, Falling in Reverse. He became more of a presence as a live streamer, averaging 500 to 1,000 active viewers. He wasn't only reacting to paid requests, but the albums themselves he would usually review on his own time. He would start displaying his chat and the sound effects you know and love. Fuck all you ho! Detroit till I die, motherfucker! His viewership had increased so much that even his throwaway videos would get at least 10,000 views. I only have one video of that amount. He started posting a bit more on TikTok after several clips of him went viral, and the long videos continued where he reacted to the most popular songs in Spotify's all time chart and current list, ranking them worst to best. The torture continued with live streams where he would force himself to listen to some of the worst music out there like Earth and Thunder. Due to the watch time of the VODs, they would be recommended to millions, with the full Earth torture stream sitting at 700,000 views. Brad would surpass 200,000 this year, which was undoubtedly his most successful one. In the current era of 2023, the formula continued. It's just that Brad is becoming more of a recognizable figure in the music industry, with musicians such as Falling Reverses, Ronnie Radke, and Jax responding to his videos in a negative light. All this attention has only benefited the man. He's living the dream, listening to a lot of music, and making a living from it. It is unknown what experiments Brad will try out in the future. He should know that getting comfortable isn't recommended. He has garnered 41 million views thus far. Compared to who he was in 2017, a Fantano stand with a dream. It is quite heartwarming to see such a story, especially for how long I've known of him. I hope you enjoyed this video, Brad. If I miss something essential, let me know. Happy birthday, bro. I appreciate you so much. You don't know how much you've changed my life. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun together. Peace. Um,